All right, just going to do a video on the horrors of hell. This is not really a subject that is covered a lot in many churches and just in Christian groups in general. It is it's just the absolute horrors that go with down, on down in hell. And it should serve as a warning and kind of a motivator to go out and give people the gospel and just to warn them about the horrors that go on down in hell and how Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation. So I'm going to just get the scriptures on on the screen on how what goes on down in hell because people think that hell is just basically burning which there is burning down there but it's more than just simply burning there's more to it than just that and, and you know some people have covered this before i know jeremy carter did a video on this and i don't agree with jeremy carter on some things but he did a video on this but i'm going to cover some things about hell that should serve as a motivator to go out and give people the gospel so first of all hell is outer darkness hell is basically pitch black it's all dark down there you can't see anything Turn to Matthew chapter 8, verse 11 to 12. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew chapter 22, verse 11 to 13. And when the king shall come, when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment, and he saith unto him, Friend, how comest thou into hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. And the king said, to, and said the king, then said the king to his servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So hell is outer darkness. It's weeping and gnashing of teeth in outer darkness. Just think about being in a pitch black room where it's really, really hot and you're just weeping and gnashing of teeth. Pretty scary thought, knowing you can't see anything. Next, hell is a furnace of fire. Matthew chapter 13, verses 41 to 42. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of the kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Matthew chapter 13, verses 49 to 50. So it shall be at the end of the world, the angels shall come forth, and sever the wicked from among the just, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire, and there shall be weeping, or sorry, but be wailing and gnashing of teeth. So, just like we read in the other scriptures, there's wailing and gnashing of teeth, and it's a furnace of fire. Think of being trapped in a, in a big oven, essentially. That's what hell is like. Uh, next, it's possible. Possible. I'm not saying for certainty. It's a, just a theory that I have. It's a theory. I'm not saying it's for a strict line of certainty. It's possible that there's flesh-eating worms in hell. Mark chapter 9, verses 43 to 48. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that is that shall never be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. If the, and if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to, to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that shall never that never shall be quenched where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. If thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye, than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. For, uh, for every one that shall be salted with fire, every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Okay, that's simple. So, okay, I'm gonna further go into this thing of worms. Turn to Isaiah chapter 66, verses 22 to 24. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I which I will make, shall shall remain before me, saith the Lord. So shall your seed, 
and your and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. And it shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring, abhorring unto all flesh. So notice something here. Notice how it says the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. Sorry, my cat just walked in. The carcasses. Well, what do worms eat? You know, whenever you see a carcass, what do you always see on it? Maggots, worms. And you have their worm shall not die. And the carcasses. So, just a theory, these carcasses are possibly being eaten by worms. Okay, to further back this up, this theory up, Job chapter 24, verses 19 to 20. Drought and heat shall consume the snow waters, so doth the grave, those also that have sinned, which have sinned. The womb shall forget him, the worm shall feed sweetly on him, he shall be no more remembered, and the wickedness and wickedness shall be broken as as a tree. Notice how it says the worm shall feed sweetly on him. Okay? And how do you know this is hell? Because he shall no more be remembered. He shall be no more remembered. Okay? What does that mean? He's in hell. And the worm shall feed sweetly on him. Okay? Just a theory, but it's possible that there are flesh-eating worms in hell, consuming people's flesh while they're in hell. My cat, once again, Boa, I'm trying to do a video. Yeah, cats, gotta love them. They're fun to have around. But anyway, I was saying that basically there's possibly flesh-eating worms in hell. Not saying that for certainty, just a theory. Next, there's no water in hell. Turn to Luke chapter 16, verses 22 to 26. And it came to pass that the beggar died, and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water to co and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But he is comforted, and thou art. But now but he now. But now he is comforted, but thou art tormented, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Okay? Notice how he wants water to cool his tongue, because he's tormented in this flame. There's no water, there's water over in Abraham's bosom, but no water in hell. So you're thirsty too, there's no water down there. You're burning, your tongue is burning, and you have no water to cool it. Pretty scary thought. Next, hell is like being baptized and immersed in unquenchable fire. Return to Matthew chapter 3 verses 11 to 12. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose, uh, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Whose fan is in his hand, he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, when he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Okay, baptizing of the Holy Ghost and a fire are two different baptisms. Baptism of the Holy Ghost and baptism of fire are not the same. Baptism of fire is hell. So you can see this as hell is like being baptized with fire. It's essentially being immersed in fire, essentially. That's what's very, very scary thought when you when you really think about it. Think about just being immersed just covered in fire you know you see in these films where, pe where people or actors you know set themselves on fire just think about that for all of eternity next hell is the place of sorrow second samuel chapter 22 verse 6 the sorrows of hell compassed me about the snares of death prevented me psalms 18 verse 5 The sorrows of hell compassed me about, the snares of death prevented me. Uh, Psalms 116 verse 3. 
the sorrows of death compassed me, and the pains of hell got hold on me. I, f I found trouble and sorrow. So hell is a place of sorrow. It's a place of, of you could say, sadness and just, you know, despair. You know, it's a very sad thought when you think about it, because it's a place of sorrow, obviously. Next, there are different levels of punishment in hell. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 22. For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains, the lowest hell. Interesting there. Psalms 86 verse 13. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. Proverbs 9 verse 18. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. So you have the lowest hell, the depths of hell. So it's possible that there's different levels of punishment in hell. Finally, hell is an, imme an immeasurable, uh, you know, you can't measure it. It's an immeasurable, unmeasurable pit under the earth. Job chapter 26 verses 6 to 7. Hell is naked before him, and destruction hath no covering. He stretches out the north over the empty place, and hangeth the earth upon nothing. What do you got there? You have the earth hung upon nothing. What is that nothing? The immeasurable pit of hell. Job chapter 11, verses 7 to 9. Canst thou, by searching out, by searching, find out God? Canst thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? It is as high as heaven. What canst thou do? Deeper than hell, what canst thou know? The measure thereof is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. Very, very sobering thought about hell. It's an immeasurable pit under the earth. You know, you read in Numbers chapter 16, verses 30 to, 30 to 33, you know, hell earth has opened up and the, you know some people go they drop right in that right down into hell it's a very very sobering thought hell is a real place it is a place of torment and these are just some of the horrors that go on down in hell there's no water there's outer darkness it's a furnace of fire uh, there's possibly flesh eating worms down there very very horrific place and it should be as a, should be a motivator uh, a motivation to go out and preach the gospel and win souls to get people uh, going to heaven and, and away from this horrific place because Jesus Christ provided a way of salvation. Jesus Christ through his death, burial, resurrection through his atonement on the cross provided a way of escape, a way to heaven. And you can only do that you can only get to heaven by trusting in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ says in John chapter 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life no man cometh from the Father but by me Acts 14 12, there is none other, none other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ is the way of salvation not Mohammed, not Buddha, not Confucius, not uh, all the Hindu gods. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the way of salvation. His blood was shed for you on the cross. It's that simple. So if you want to escape this horrific place, put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. You don't earn salvation by your works. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. Romans 4, 5, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. It's that simple. And these are the horrors that go on down there. And this, should, again, should be a motivator to go out and win souls and preach the gospel to people. Because no, therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade mankind. Paraphrasing, of course. But just wanted to show you guys that. Just the horrors of hell. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.